Okay, welcome to lesson 19, closed conduit flow. I don't really know why they call it closed conduit flow. Um, it seems like they could have done that at any random point along the along this uh, progression, uh, but this is typically called closed conduit flow. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start really analyzing uh, head losses. And um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about energy loss due to friction for laminar flow, and then we're gonna start using the Moody diagram to kind of get at the same sort of thing. This Moody diagram is something that is gonna require a little bit of practice. Um, I highly recommend you make sure you understand it um, as soon as possible, start working on it so that it's uh, second nature by the time the final comes up. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by talking about head loss. And basically, um, we're gonna split it apart into two terms, okay? So the head loss equals H sub lowercase f plus H sub L. Okay, so basically this is the total head loss. And we're splitting it into these two terms, um, H sub F, okay, I mean obviously different books will use different uh, nomenclature for this, but H sub F is energy loss due to friction. Okay, so basically, um, we're gonna, you can kind of think of this as the resistance along a pipe. Okay, now this H with the lowercase l, this is the, this is so-called the minor losses. Okay, and so this is um, basically viscous dissipation of energy Yeah, excuse me, of turbulence. Um, let's let's correct that. Of turbulence. Okay, at fittings, at fittings, bends, expansions, contractions, contractions, <laughs> etc. Okay, so basically, anytime something happens with that pipe, something changes with the pipe. Um, you will have a quote-unquote minor loss. Okay, everywhere else there's just like this kind of like slow bleed of energy due to the friction along the pipe. Okay, so we're gonna talk really quickly about how do we get at this friction loss and um, you know, you know, what is it? Okay, so we'll, we'll start with the friction loss. Friction loss. Okay, this this stuff over here, this, uh, these minor losses, we're not going to talk about today. That'll be for uh, next class. Uh, I've kind of like mentioned them a little bit when we were doing the HGL and the EGL uh, and that we had to draw them, but I didn't uh, talk about how to solve for them. Okay, so for, for right now, what we're going to do is we want to deal with, and this is a very important equation, this is called the Darcy Weisbach, Weisbach equation. Okay, and we've actually kind of already already hinted at this one, but so the HF equals F, which is a friction factor, um, times L on D, V squared on 2G. Okay, so this Darcy Weisbach equation is very important. It tells you how much energy you're gonna lose for a given length of pipe of a certain diameter with the velocity flowing at a certain rate. This F is a friction factor, and it depends on a lot of different things. Um, and that's kind of what we're gonna be spending the rest of this class talking about. Okay, so the F is a friction factor. Okay, well named. Okay, and you know, I, to give you an idea of scale, it's usually, you know, one over 50, one over 100, you know, something along those lines. So 0 0.01, 0 0.02, something along those lines. I mean, certainly, I don't think you'll ever get higher than like 0 0.03. Um, okay, anyway, uh, we're gonna, let's talk about laminar flow. So this is gonna split kind of into laminar and so I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go down here. Okay, so laminar flow. Okay, this is in a pipe. Um, I should erase that and say in a pipe. Okay, so let's go over here. 
Okay, so we're gonna remember that's the case where the Reynolds number, VD on new, okay, is less than about 2,000. Okay, again, that's a very approximate uh, number. And what that means is this is a, the Reynolds number is small, so the viscosity is important, okay? So it's small because the viscosity is relatively large, so we can say here that the viscosity matters, okay? It's important in this case, okay? Once this number gets too big, then basically the viscosity is small relative to everything else, and we can't really, um, can't really make a lot of sense of that. Um, okay, so um, in this case, the V bar, okay, is approximately equal to uh, V max divided by two, okay, which therefore tells us that the alpha is about 2.0, okay? So the reason the V, the v max over two looks like that is because, okay, as we get, this is the flow in a pipe. And basically the V bar is approximately like right here. So if this is V bar and this is V max. Okay, so that's the idea here. Okay, now um, somebody kind of you know, went around and they did some experiments and they discovered that in the laminar flow case, F equals 64 divided by the Reynolds number. Okay? So that's a, a nice, easy result. Okay? Because I can take, um, I can take that and I can plug it into Darcy Weisbach. So if I plug it into Darcy Weisbach, into Darcy Weisbach, okay, then I get something that looks like this. HF equals... Okay, instead of F, I'm gonna put 64 over the Reynolds number, which is, uh, let's see, depending on how you wanna write it, I'm gonna write it like this, rho V bar D over mu. Okay, and if you're wondering why that looks different than it does above, it's because this right here equals uh, nu. Okay, but otherwise it's exactly the same. Okay. And now we have the rest of the equation. So we've got the L over D and the V squared on 2G. Okay, now hopefully you can see why I wrote it that way is we can start to kind of move stuff around and get rid of some stuff. And so what ends up happening is if you do all of this, you end up with um, something that looks like this. HF equals 32 mu L, L is the length of the pipe, V bar over, bringing that rho and that uh, G together, we get a gamma times D squared. Okay, to which you might say, okay, so what? Well, there's one interesting thing here um, before we work in an example problem here, which I would like to mention, which is this right here. Okay, notice, okay, there's nothing in here. This is obviously this is for laminar flow. Okay, and in this case, not a function of the roughness of the pipe. So that's kind of interesting, right? So you would think that um, no matter what is going on, that we would care about what the edges of the pipe are made. Here it's saying it doesn't matter if the pipe is glass, doesn't matter if it's concrete, doesn't matter what the, the edges of the pipe are. If it's laminar flow, the function, the roughness of the pipe does not matter. So that's a very interesting result. Okay, and let's uh, work an example before we move on to the turbulent case. All right, so let's see. All right, example, kerosene flows through a quarter inch pipe in a laminar regime, find Q and V bar. All right, so, you know, so obviously this is kerosene. So even though I'm coloring it in blue, this is blue kerosene. <laughs> and uh, all right, so what we wanna do here is we wanna talk about, so this is in a laminar flow regime, okay? Um, in fact, one of these days I should really back calculate this to see if this actually is a laminar regime. Um, It'd be hard to know a priori because you don't know V. So it'd be very hard to get at whether or not it's in a laminar regime. Um, we, could, we could test it at the end. Let's go ahead and test it at the end and see if this turns out to be a uh, laminar, just, just to be curious, okay? 
Um, obviously, in the problem, if they tell you it's a laminar regime, you just have to go, well, it's a laminar regime. All right, so if we're, we're solving this sucker, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to do the energy equation. Um, and how do I know that I'm doing the energy equation? Well, let's see. Well, first of all, it's because we're working right now on closed conduit flow, so we're working on head losses. Um, so the only way to deal with the friction loss is with the uh, energy equation. Um, let's see. Obviously, momentum doesn't work because momentum has to do with um, forces. Obviously, continuity is not going to be enough to solve this. Um, that's pretty much it, man. We're, we're just going to we're going to use some energy. So it's P one over gamma plus Z one plus V one squared alpha on 2g plus um, any pumps equals p2 on gamma plus z2 plus alpha v2 squared on 2g plus uh, let's see is it turbines and any head loss okay so how do we do this okay let's see so we're gonna have to pick our points the points I recommend always is if we can get them into the atmosphere, we want those points. So here's a point right here, one. Here's a point right here, two. Okay. Why did I choose those? Because, um, well, because I know a lot of stuff about both of those. Okay. And the first most obvious is I can get rid of these pressures because those are in the atmosphere. Okay. So we're going gauge pressure. So those are gone. Um, Z1 and Z2 are known in both of those locations. So I'm going to make Z2 our datum. Okay, this is our datum. Okay, Z1 will then be a half a foot. I guess I'll use it like this. Um, V1 squared on 2G, that's going to be zero because of the tank or the Tahoe assumption. Okay, V2 on, squared on zero, well, that's what we're looking for. But because this is laminar, that little alpha right there is going to be a two. Okay, but this V squared is what we're looking for. There's no pumps, there's no turbines. And this head loss is being split up into HF plus H lowercase l. But for now, we're going to go ahead and neglect this because we don't know how to deal with it yet. Okay? So ultimately, we get an equation that looks like this. 0 0.5 feet equals 2. Now, I'm going to change this to uh, just V bar squared because V2 is the same as the velocity in the pipe. And so that's what we're looking for over 2G plus HF, okay? So basically what that says is the elevation from, um, from point one is being converted into velocity, but it has to also overcome this friction, okay? So I will note before I continue that um, this HL right here, these head losses, okay? We would find those at this bend and we would find them at this entrance, okay? But um, but we're not accounting for those. So basically anytime the pipe changes or the flow has to deal with some sort of changing conditions, then that's where we're gonna find those. But for now, we're not gonna worry about those. Okay, so for HF, we know this is a laminar regime, so we're gonna use our formula that we had from um, over to the left. So we're gonna say two V bar squared on two G. Oh, excuse me. Um, that's supposed to be an equal sign. Okay, plus, now we're gonna put in all the Let's see, 32 um, mu L V bar on gamma D squared. Now, we don't use, use this formula very often. So, um, yeah, you don't bother memorizing this one. Um, it's not going to show up all that often. So let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and plug in numbers equals, let's, let's move it all over to the same side of the equal sign. Um, so let's do it like this. 0 equals 2 v bar squared on 2 and g in this case we are is 32.2 feet per second squared yachi machi those twos are going to cancel nicely uh, plus 32 mu okay so you're maybe you're wondering why we had that temperature we had the temperature because kerosene's viscosity changes depending on the uh the temperature, just like when you uh, heat up honey, you notice that it becomes less viscous. Um, okay, so now we need the length of the pipe, 10 feet. Okay, V bar squared, no, not squared, just V bar, excuse me. 
okay? And that's what we're looking for, divided by the gamma, which is gonna be 0 0.8, because times uh, 62.4 PCF, okay? Because that's a specific weight. And then its diameter of the pipe is quarter inch pipe. So we're gonna divide that by 12, and so we'll get 1 48th of a foot squared, okay? So, oh, minus 0 0.5 feet. All right, now how do we solve this? Okay, hopefully, um, if you're staring at it, you'll recognize that this is a squared, this is to the first power, and this is to the zeroth power. Okay, so this is a quadratic. So what you would need to do is you would need to uh, do a, a quadratic solver. Um, I'm not gonna bother doing that. You can use the, um, you could solve the quadratic equation. Uh, your calculator might do it for you. Um, but it's going to be 0 0.81 feet per second. Okay. And then if we take that and we say, well, Q equals V bar A, we can say Q equals 0 0.81 feet per second times A, which is going to be pi times the diameter, 1 48th of a foot um, squared over 4. And we'll get Q equals... 2.77 times 10 to the minus fourth cubic feet per second, okay? So those are our answers, and that's how we solve it. All right, so. All right, so let's scoot back over here. Okay, so we have all this stuff over here for friction loss, and we have our darcy weisbach equation, and we got the laminar flow, okay? So here's, here's our laminar flow stuff. So now we're going to kind of start talking about the Turbulent flow, turbulent flow. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of room here, okay, so that I'm not right on top of the, um, the stuff from earlier. If it will let me erase the stuff from earlier. Of course it will, but only with a little tiny eraser. Okay. Um, anyway, so um, here we are. Okay. So, um, you know, this is going to be, in many ways... Uh, the, um, you know, kind of like a mirror of what we did earlier, except in this case, uh, that new, that little curvy uh, uh, viscosity symbol, okay, so, so the Reynolds number is greater than 4,000, but that new basically is small relative to the, so the viscosity is relatively small. Viscosity is relatively small, so it is, quote unquote, unimportant, okay, unimportant. Okay, so um, what does that mean? Well, in this case, um, if we imagine the flow in the pipe, okay, because of the more efficient mixing, in this case, mixing a momentum, okay, the, 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 flow, um, the flow profile is more uniform. So if this is like our V bar, okay, this is like our V max, okay, they're almost equal to each other, okay? So V bar, you know, is approximately equal to Vmax, okay? So we typically say the alpha is 1.0, although you will see texts that say 1.03 or something, you know, silly like that. Um, but what happens here is that, um, well, the, the head loss or the, due, due to friction is just the Darcy-Weisbach Darcy equation Um, excuse me, F, L on D, V squared on 2G, okay? Um, but F is, is a little bit more difficult to find, okay? So F, F is a function of some things, okay? And we'll, we'll kind of talk about that in a little bit, about what, what kind of goes into becoming the friction factor, okay? So before we do this, um, let's... Um, Let's let's go let's go back up and we'll talk some a little theory here. Okay, so um, let's see. So give me this. Let's go over here. Okay, so we're going to start with this idea here. Now I got this from another textbook, the textbook that I used last semester. So what we want to do is we want to kind of scratch out that little symbol right there and make that an epsilon. Okay, so this guy, this is Nicaragua, and uh, Nicaragua, Nick. Nikaradze, how do you spell his name? Nikaradze. Okay, he did all these experiments. Um, this was a fairly long time ago. 
and he was looking for this F, this resistance factor, resistance coefficient, as this, as this uh, drawing is, is calling it. And, um, you know, so he did a whole bunch of experiments. So, so what he did is, and this, this um, diagram is a little bit complicated, so take, just take a second to, like, bear with me. So I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to solve for the Reynolds number of each experiment that I do. I've got up some various pipes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to vary the Reynolds number. And as I do that, basically I'm going to measure the flows and things like that. And I'm going to back calculate out what this resistance coefficient is. Okay, so basically he probably varied this by simply uh, changing the velocity of the flow. Um, at some point in time, you know, the velocities might have gotten high enough where he, it might have been advantageous to use a different fluid so that he could get um, higher Reynolds numbers or even by just using a, a wider pipe. Um, but what he reasoned was, was my guess is that these two things are going to be um, functions of each other. Okay, so basically he reasoned that as he changes the Reynolds number, he expected that to change this F. Okay, so... Um, all right, so then what he did is um, he wanted to see how it varied with respect to those things. And then a third thing, which was this, okay, which is called the relative roughness. The relative roughness. Okay, and the relative roughness is, is kind of like this. So that epsilon, that is a, what we're going to call a sand roughness height. So basically, if I, well, let me redraw the top one. Okay, if you imagine that the, the walls kind of have like, you know, like, you know, so they've got some size to those, to the little roughness elements. So let's imagine it's a concrete pipe and you could just you could kind of feel the roughness of it. Okay, so what is the size of that? Well, it's got a characteristic size, which is going to call the sand roughness height. Okay, whereas this is the diameter right here. Okay, so if you do epsilon over D, you're kind of getting an idea of kind of like how large is that roughness relative to the size of the pipe. Okay, so the relative roughness, that's kind of the idea here. So what he did is he said, okay, well, let's, Let's study this, and let's kind of try to figure out what's going on with this um, this flow, right? Let's 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 try to back out by varying this, and using a whole bunch of different pipes with different relative roughnesses, and let's figure out if we can back out what this friction factor is. Okay, and so the first thing to note is that over here on the on the far left, okay, the friction factor was really predictable. And it didn't matter which pipe he used, okay? The relative roughness did not matter. All of the pipes, okay, all of the pipes fell on this line. Okay, over here, in fact, we've, I've already discussed this, but F equals 64 over the Reynolds number, okay? It was so predictable, and there you go. It is not a function of this relative roughness. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Okay, now, then, um, something happened everything started to get a little bit weird. Basically, like right in here, we started to transition into some turbulence. Okay, right in here, we started to get some kind of, we're, transitional, we're transitioning into turbulence. Okay, now um, the interesting thing about this is that once he got, let's say, I'm gonna use an imaginary line here about here. Okay, everything over there, which, we, which we're gonna call fully rough flow, Okay, um, notice that way over here, that F is not a function of Reynolds number. Okay, so as you go from like here to here, it no longer matters what the Reynolds number is. Okay, it's, it's constant, right? I mean, it's not perfectly constant, but pretty much. Okay. Now, somewhere in between, okay, in this transitional flow regime, okay, F is a function of both, uh, so over here in this transitional flow, as they call it, F is a function of, you know, Reynolds number and, um, and the relative roughness. So it's a function of epsilon over D and the Reynolds number, okay? So this is obviously the most difficult region to deal with, okay? If you are in this region, you're unhappy, okay? That's the unhappy Okay, you know, someone stole your lunch money, you're unhappy, okay? Um, anyway, so, um, so that's the idea behind, um, behind uh, this idea, okay? So if we zoom back out here, 
Okay, I didn't want to I didn't want to shrink all of it. Okay. Um if we zoom back out, we go over here. Okay, here we go. So now we're going to talk specifically about that frictional factor. There's also a transitional region in here. Transitional region between these two. Okay. Um, and so over here, I'll say f is a function of the epsilon on d. And in this traditional region, f is a function of uh, both the Reynolds number and epsilon on d. Okay. All right, so um, let's talk about this friction factor, okay? Because this is um, this is heady stuff, and it's about to get really heady. And I'm going to change this guy out because I don't want to use this Moody diagram. Okay, so the this right here that I've just zoomed in on, this is the Moody diagram. Okay, and what's going to happen is this is where you're going to get your f, okay? Your your friction factor. And your friction factor is empirical, meaning it's determined entirely by experiments, okay? And, and you basically get it off of this diagram. And so you're going to get it from Moody slash Nicaradze. Nicaradze. Okay, you're never going to look at Nicaradze again, actually, but um, um, that's kind of where it's going to come from. Um, it is the effect of the roughness, pipe roughness on flow, on the flow, okay? And um, so let's go ahead and let's let's zoom in on this sucker and let's, uh, let's start working with it because this is really annoying, okay? Now this particular Moody diagram, you can find them all over um, the internet um, if you want, okay? And they're always a little bit complicated um, and so that's why we're going to spend a little bit of time on this. Um, we're what? We're not even half hour into this lecture, and we're going to spend basically the rest of this lecture talking about this. I will give you the equation for this. Um, so let me go ahead and give you that equation uh, right now. Um, like, let's suppose you were like, you know, you're like sitting there and you're like, oh, you know, Dr. Wagner, I don't like this um, this equation. I mean, this this chart. I think you look at it and already see that there's kind of a lot going on here. And you might say, well, I don't want to do that. Isn't there an equation that's going to do all this for me? And there is. There is. Um, and let's see. Let, let's, let's go ahead and write that equation out for you just so you'll know that, like, if ever you're looking for F and you're like, I don't want to do Moody, okay? Well, that's, that's fair enough. Here's the equation, okay? This is called the uh, Colebrook equation. And it is an exact solution. And I'm, here's why I'm, well, I'll tell you why I'm giving it to you after I give it to you and after you realize why this is not a satisfactory way to solve for this. So it looks like this. 1 over the square root of f equals negative 2.0 log. That's a log 10, not a natural log. Um, let's see. Uh, this is going to be uh, epsilon on d. Well, epsilon on 3.7d, excuse me. Epsilon on 3.7d plus 2.51 over Reynolds number times the square root of f. Okay, so that is how you get your your friction factor. Okay, now what's the problem with that? Okay, so the problem with it is this. Okay, and, and hopefully you can see this. You're like, all right, I'm going to solve for f. What's the problem with that? Well, the problem is f is on the other side of the equation as well. Okay, so this is what we call an implicit equation, which means you cannot solve this um, not explicitly. What you would have to do to solve this is you'd have to put in a guess for f, solve this to give you an f, which then you would say, okay, well, that's a pretty good guess. Let's put that in over here and solve for f again. And let's, that's a better guess. And then we're going to go back over here and we're going to put it in here and we're going to solve for it. Okay, and so basically you're going to have to keep doing this until it converges. Those two f's become the same number. Okay, and that's kind of annoying. Okay, so we're not going to do that. Well, we will do this. It's called iteration, and we will, we'll do iteration, but we're not going to do that um, right now. So unfortunately, it looks like that has decided it wants to be on top of the page. Okay, so we're going to push that aside. Okay, and we're going to zoom in here on Moody, and we're going to talk about how this works. Okay, so this will be faster than that iteration, although sometimes we're going to have to iterate on the diagram itself. Okay, so... 
Let's see how, how let's see. Uh, let's let's start by discussing kind of a few of the features here. Okay, this looks a lot like the Nicaragua. It is a lot like the Nicaragua. Okay, so um, because it's kind of like a more universal Nicaragua, you can you can use it for a hundred thousand different situations. I got this particular one from uh, from the Fe fluids um, equations. So it's kind of the one that I recommend you use for a, a test or something. I will note note that this is Reynolds number is unitless. This relative roughness is unitless. This friction factor is unitless, which means you can use this for English system and you can use it for the SI system. Okay, no problems. Um, the drawback, of course, this particular one is because the FE. I assume is I assume it's because the FE is for American engineers. Epsilon here is in feet. Okay, so if you need uh, the roughness elements, the sand roughness height of something that is not in feet, um, then you would need to f either you would probably need to convert this or find another chart. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So now let's talk about some things that are going on here. Okay. By the way, you need to find this thing in your textbook and bookmark it because we're going to be using it a lot. Okay. Um, all right. So the first thing to note. Uh, we're going to look at the x-axis down here. Okay, notice this is a logarithmic scale. So that's 10 to the 3rd, that's 10 to the 4th, that's 10 to the 5th, 10 to the 6th. Okay, uh, for a lot of you who have not worked with logarithmic scales yet, um, so this will be a little bit confusing. But basically, this number right here is 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, okay, uh, 1 million, etc., etc. Okay, so the way that you would read this is you might say, okay, well this, so say you're working and you get a Reynolds number of four times 10 to the third. Well, that's right here. Okay, so, uh, you know, like here's 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, okay, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 60,000, 80,000, okay, 100,000. 200,000, 400,000, 600,000, 800,000, 1 million, okay, and on and on. Okay, so that's how you read the x-axis. Okay, now the friction factor I want to note is also logarithmic, but it's a little bit kind of clearer what's going on here, okay, and sometimes it just takes a little bit of counting. So we notice that 0 0.01 is right here and 0 0.02 is right here. So then these labels here, this is, well, what is that and that and that and that? Okay, well, it's split. It looks like there's five partitions. So this is 0 0.012, 0 0.014, 0 0.016, 0 0.018, and then 0 0.02, okay? And so you got to kind of figure out what your partitions are, okay? So I'm just doing the partitions for this particular Moody diagram. If you use a different one, um, the one in your textbook is almost certainly going to partition it a little bit differently, okay? Um, now, we're gonna look at the left hand, I mean, excuse me, the right hand y-axis, and we've got a relative roughnesses over here. Now, this is something that I find very annoying, and it is always, 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 always like this, is that this number right here, okay, they never do this in scientific notation. I find that really, really annoying. It creates a lot of errors for me. Uh, you guys may be a little bit cleaner than I am with that. Um, but you just gotta kind of pay attention to how many zeros you have. I tend to focus really hard on making sure that I have counted my zeros, okay? Because that's where I typically make errors, okay? Now, what's interesting here about this, this right-hand side is that it does not, it's not, well, it is an axis, but really these numbers, I shouldn't say, I hope I didn't say these were semi-logarithmic because they're not. What they are is they're attached to a line. So this point zero 0.02 right here, okay? That attaches to this line right here. Okay, it does not attach to the grid. Okay. So in other words, if I was sitting here and I was like, all right, so I've got a relative roughness. So I've done my, my math and I've ended up with a relative roughness of 0 0.02. Okay. And I got a Reynolds number of, I don't know, uh, 1.4 times 10 to the, let's make it third, okay? So a really, really, really small one. Let's actually not go that small, okay? Because that's a problematic one. 
and we'll talk about that in one second. Let's do that one second, but let's start with 10 to the fifth. Okay, so we're gonna go 10 to the fifth. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, in order to get our, our, um, our, our value uh, for F, is we'd say, okay, well, our Reynolds number is 1.4 times 10 to the fifth. So here's 10 to the fifth, and that's one times 10 to the fifth. Here's two times 10 to the fifth. So 1.4, that's 40% of the way between those two, right? So we're gonna go like right there, okay? And obviously this, there is some approximation here. You're gonna do the best you can. Um, it's not gonna be perfect. Um, and so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here, when we hit that line, and we're gonna bounce it to the left. Okay, until we hit the uh, the y-axis. So it's going to go over here, and that's our value. Okay, so it looks like we're at um, so f equals zero point zero two, and then this is going to be two 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 four two six. So it's you see the two four or two five. It's kind of up to you. Um, I'm going to go with two four. Okay. Um, like I said, like it's going to be not perfect and you're just going to have to deal with that. Okay. Um, there's a certain amount of play in your answers. Usually this number, that last kind of significant digits, not really going to play that much. It's not going to really matter all that much. Okay. Um, let's suppose I had done the original thing that I had written. Suppose I had written, um, suppose I had done 10 to the third instead. Okay. So let's make this 10 to the third. And let's, um, let's do another one. Okay, so now we're going to go 1.4 times 10 to the third. I'll do this one in green. Okay, 1.4 times 10 to the third. Oh, dear Lord. Okay, so here's 10 to the third. 1.4 is about, oh, I don't know, right here. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm not even hitting any of these relative roughnesses. Okay, not even hitting any. Well, of course I'm not, right? Remember, if the Reynolds number is low enough, it is not a fun the f is not a function of Reynolds roughness, uh, uh, of, of relative roughness. Okay, so I could do this and bounce it over here if I wanted to. Okay, and I might get a value of like, I don't know, f is approximately equal to, I don't know, what is that? Uh, 0 0.04244446, maybe 0 0.47, 0 0.047. Okay, I could do that. However, if you end up over here and you're in a laminar regime, you'd be better off saying that F equals 64 divided by the Reynolds number. Okay, and if you do that, okay, we're gonna get uh, 0 0.0457. Okay, so you can see that these two match, okay, as you would expect, okay. So, um, yeah, so if you're in this laminar regime, I recommend just using this equation, okay, because there is a nice equation that will work for this, okay. Um, one of the things that I want to note is something that we want to be that is very, very, very helpful is you'll notice that your Reynolds numbers, okay, so uh, in this like complete turbulence regime, okay, so complete turbulence regime is defined basically by the area where the lines go flat, okay, so I don't know if I could draw this properly. A lot of times there's a, oh, well, okay, it's over here maybe, okay, a lot of times there's a, uh, there's a nice, uh, kind of line on these on these diagrams to show you where it's fully turbulent but basically if you're in this region over here you got to be very happy because it's very easy right so let's suppose I had a um, let's suppose I had um, you know if I had epsilon over D okay a relative roughness of uh, I don't know 0 0.010 okay fairly rough pipe and I said well the Reynolds number is uh, I don't know, 7.5 times 10 to the, you know, I don't know, seventh. Okay, like, all right, cool. All right, so epsilon on D points, you know, so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for F. What is F? Okay, so what we do is we'd say, okay, epsilon of D, 0 0.010. Okay, so that's this line right here. So 0, 010, zero, so I'm gonna go ahead and, okay, bounce it this way. Okay, um, noting that this is gonna be a lot easier to solve on the right hand side of this diagram. Okay, now we say, okay, so now I need 7.5 times 10 to the seventh. Here's 10 to the seventh, uh, two times 10 to the seventh, four times six, eight times 10 to the seventh. Awfully hard to read down in there. 
Um, here's seven, so here's 7.5. Again, it's gonna be pretty exact, or pretty inexact. But look, it doesn't really matter how exact I get it, right? Because if I had accidentally put that line on eight or six or even four or two or one times 10 to the seventh, I'd have gotten the same value because when I hit that point, when I hit that line, sorry, I've got uh, construction workers kind of coming and going out there. Uh, but when I hit that line, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a left-hand turn until I hit the, uh, until I hit the y-axis. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way here to there. Okay, and that's where we're going to be. Okay, so what is that number? Uh, Okay, assuming I drew it pretty well, I'm not sure that I did. I think I might have wavered a little bit. So we're, I'm gonna think, I think that that's actually should have been a midge higher than that. Um, but anyway, 0 0.038, right? So 0 0.038, okay? And that's how we read this thing, okay? And um, the only trick is, you know, don't end up in this laminar flow. If you end up in that laminar regime, use this. And otherwise, it's, this is a complicated diagram. We've, we've, you've never used something like this before, I'm assuming. It's going to be painful a little bit, uh, but I think you'll get through it. So that's it. So um, hope you all are doing well. Take care of yourselves. Um, and be prepared because this moody stuff is coming. And uh, it's the last thing we're going to do in this uh, semester. And, um, and we use this a lot. And we're going to be iterating on this diagram. So make sure you understand this diagram. Okay. Uh, take it easy. Goodbye.